All right, so we're going to start chapter 7 today. Systems of linear equations and two variables. So what's a system of linear equations? It's just more than one, it's just a couple of them. Uh, generally, we're going to be dealing with two. In two variables, a system of equations is two equations. Two equations, two variables. Okay? So our objectives for this section are first to determine whether an ordered pair is a solution to a system uh, of linear equations. We want to be able to solve linear equations by two different methods, the substitution method and the elimination method. They call it the addition method here. We're not going to call it addition. We're going to call it elimination. Okay? Now, we're going to learn two different methods. You are not going to be required to do both methods if you don't want to. I don't really care how you solve systems. I just want to be, I want you to be able to solve them. Whichever one works best for you, feel free to use, okay? I, on tests, a lot of times teachers put solve this system by elimination, solve this system by substitution. I'm going to put solve this system. I don't care how you do it, okay? So if you get really fluent in one way and you want to just keep on rolling with it, that's fine with me, okay? Identify systems that have uh, one solution, identify systems that have more than one solution, identify systems that have no solution, okay? And then lastly, do one random problem. It has nothing to do with systems of linear equations. Uh, it's just kind of a random break-even problem for cost analysis. I don't know why it's in this section, but we're going to do it anyway because it's a good problem. All right, so any equation or all equations in the form ax plus by equals c are straight lines. They're linear equations. Okay, the word linear, when you hear it, should, denote, should you know your brain should automatically go to line because that's what it is. That's what linear means. It means a line. Uh, if we have two lines and we want to say that they are equal to each other, the only time that they can be equal to each other is if they intersect. Okay. So two lines only are equal to each other at the places where they intersect. So if we were to graph a line and another line, where do they intersect? At an ordered pair, right? That ordered pair is the solution that satisfies both of those equations, okay? That makes sense? So if you've got some ordered pair, I should be able to plug it in and just verify, yes, it works, yes, it works. It should make both of them true, okay? Now, is there ever a chance that two lines will not have an intersection? When? Parallel lines. Parallel lines. That's the definition of parallel lines, two lines that never intersect, okay? So it is possible that would give us no solution, okay? What if the lines happen to be, oh, that's awful. What if the lines happen to be like that? Yeah, it's infinitely, it's not all, because this point over here is not a solution. But there are infinitely many solutions. Like this is, this is a solution, and this, and this, and this, and this, 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 here, 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 you know, I can do that all day. So there are infinitely many solutions. Now every solution is not an answer, but there are infinitely many. Okay, so that's the three different things you can see. All right. So a, a linear system that has at least one solution is called a consistent system, whereas one that has no solution is called inconsistent. Those are two kind of, they have certain connotations, right? Consistent generally means good. Inconsistent generally means bad. So it's kind of easy to remember which one's which. All right, so let's look at this system. Systems are generally denoted by this little big brace. Let you know that these two are together. And I want to know if this ordered pair 1, 2 is a solution to that system. So how do I do it? Plug it in for x and y. So if I plug it into the first one and it is a solution, then what do I do? Plug it into the second one. Now, what if I plug it into the first one and it's not a solution? Do I need to plug it into the second one? No. If, you, if it doesn't work for the first one, who cares if it works for the second one? Okay? 
So, let's try it. Let's plug it into the first one. 2 times x minus 3 times y equals negative 4. So 2 times 1 minus 3 times 2 equals negative 4. So what's 2 times 1? Negative 3 times 2. So 2 minus negative 6 is negative 4. Is negative 4 equal to negative 4? It is. So now we know that, we go to the next one. 2 times x plus y equals 4. That gives us 2 plus 2. 4 equals 4. I'm not, I'm not going there. So, we do have that 1, 2 is a solution to this system. Okay? It's pretty easy, right? Now, what about... 7, 6. Two times seven minus three times six equals negative four. Fourteen minus eighteen. It's fourteen minus eighteen. Negative four. Well, negative four does equal negative four, so we gotta go to the second one. Two times seven plus six equals oh that one's not looking real promising. <coughs> Two times seven is fourteen. Fourteen plus six is twenty. 20 does not equal 4. Not a solution. Okay? So now that we've seen that there is one solution and that we've verified that the point 76 works for one but not for the other, we know that they're not the same line, right? Because if they were the same line, then any point that worked for one would have to work for the other one. But they did have one point in common. Therefore, that first point was the only point that could possibly work because they have to be two intersecting lines. So any other point from this point on, I would not even have to test. Okay? All right, so here is a breakdown of the way we use substitution to solve a system of linear equations. First thing, we want to put them, uh, one of the equations, we want to solve it for the variable, either variable, doesn't matter. I can solve for x, I can solve for y, doesn't really matter. A lot of times we'll have one of the equations already solved and bully for us, we don't have any, do any work, okay? So those we like. But if we don't, we're going to pick one and solve it for x or y. And we're generally going to use this method if one of the variables doesn't have a coefficient. You know, you've got 2x plus y equals 7. That y doesn't have a coefficient on it. If I solve for y, I don't have a, I don't have a uh, fraction. Okay? So we like that. So that's what we want to do. Now, once we get that y equals or x equals, we're going to take that variable and plug it. We're going to substitute that function in for the variable into the other equation. And that's going to give us an equation with one variable. We can solve for that one variable and get a value. Take that value, plug it back in again to, the, uh, to another equation, and it should spit out the second value. Okay? This sounds really complicated. I swear to you, it's not. Let's look at it and see what I'm talking about. So we've got a system of equations. 3x plus 2y equals 4. 2x plus y equals 1. Is there an obvious equation for us to solve for one variable. Right, that y there, because it's by itself, doesn't have a coefficient, it's going to be the easiest one to solve. So I want to take the 2x plus y, and I'm going to solve it for y. So how do I solve it for y? Subtract the 2x. That gives me y equals 1 minus 2x. So this gives me a function for y. I can take that and take the other equation and instead of y, I'm going to plug 1 minus 2x in. I'm substituting that value for y. Okay? So I get 3x plus 2 and instead of y, I'm going to use 1 minus 2x.
And that's the substitution. And that's why it's called substitution. So then you just distribute through. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 2x. Negative 4x equals 4. Collect our likes terms. 3x minus 4x. Negative x plus 2 equals 4. Subtract 2. Negative x equals 2. Divide by negative 1 x equals negative 2. So now I have a value for x. So how do I get my value for y? I'm going to plug it in. And then the easiest place to plug it in is there where I have y solved. y equals something. I want y, right? That's what I'm looking for. Why not just plug it in there? I can plug it in anywhere. I got three different equations I can use at this point. But really, that y equals 1 minus 2x is the easiest place to plug it in. So if I say y equals 1 minus 2 times negative 2, because x is negative 2. So that gives me y equals 1. What's negative 2 times negative 2? y equals 5. So that gives me the nice ordered pair, negative 2, 5. Absolutely. At this level, we really want to test our answers. Now, we don't have to physically write it out. You can do this in your head or, you know, write it above, you know, whatever. If we know x is negative 2 and y is 5, what's 3 times negative 2? Negative 6. 2 times 5? Negative 6 and 10? It's 4. Okay, I can see that works. Negative 2 times 2? Negative 4. y is 5. Negative 4 and 5 is 1. So it does work for both equations. Okay? Now, if we do this method and we get a solution, that solution is the only solution. Okay? Getting x equals and y equals verifies that there is only one solution. Generally, yeah. Mm -hmm. You just do whichever one's easier. So you could have put it back into I could have done it either one of these. Okay. Absolutely. Because if you did, like if you did it here, two times negative two plus y equals one. Negative four plus y equals one. Add four. Add four. Y equals five. Right. You're going to get the same thing either way. It just tends to be a little easier if you use the other one. Okay. All right. Now, for some reason, they put the wrong slide in here. So I'm going to have to just tell you what to do for solving by elimination. What we do when we solve by elimination is we make sure that both of our equations are in the standard form, x plus y equals a number. Okay, So you want both equations in ax plus by equals c. Once they are both in that form, then we want to get one variable to have opposite but equal coefficients. So if x has two x here, I want negative 2x on the bottom. If I've got 5y, I want negative 5y on the bottom. I want one of them, it doesn't matter which one, but I want somehow one of my variables to have the same but opposite coefficient. And then I'm just going to add the two equations together. And that's going to eliminate that variable. Because if they're the same number but opposite signs, they cancel out when you add them. That gives me one equation, one variable, 
and then I can take that equation, solve it for the variable, plug that number back into one of the equations, and solve for the second variable, okay? This tends to be the way most people do it, just because it's easier to remember one method, and this tends to be a fairly, it's not too bad a method to use, and it's, unless you've already got one equation solved for x or y, this tends to be quicker most of the time, okay? So, let's look at this, and we're gonna do this one two different ways. We're gonna eliminate x, then we're gonna eliminate y. Okay, so I wanna make sure that we can do it either way, because both, both ways have a different way of doing it, basically. So notice, which one is gonna be the easiest to eliminate? If you, well, if you look at, if you look at the, what we're looking at is the x's and the y's. The x's have a four and a two. I can turn the two into a four pretty easily by multiplying that equation by two. Because remember, we can multiply equations by anything we want to. It's not gonna change it as long as we multiply the entire equation by a value. Right, because I want it to be opposite, right? So if I multiply that bottom by negative two, then the x becomes negative four, and that's gonna eliminate that x. If I look at y, I got five and negative three. They're already opposite signed, but there's no real way to make the five become a three or the three become a five, okay? So we're gonna worry about that in a minute. We're just gonna eliminate the x, okay? So if we multiply the x by negative two, then that's gonna give us four x plus five y equals three. The top one didn't change, but the bottom one, we're gonna distribute that negative two all the way through. So negative two times two x, negative four x, negative two times negative three y, positive six y, and then negative two times seven is negative 14. And then we add those two equations together. The x's will cancel out, five y plus six y, Gives us 11y, 3 minus 14, negative 11. We want y by itself, divide by 11, y equals negative 1. Now, we don't have a nice, neat x equals something like we did in the, or in the uh, substitution one, so we just pick one of the two equations and plug this y in and solve for x, okay? So which one do you want to do, top one or bottom one? Top. All right, so we do 4x plus 5 times negative 1 equals 3. Just doing that substitution of that y. So 4x, what's 5 times negative 1? Negative 5 equals 3. Add the 5 to both sides. 4x equals 8, divide by 4, x equals 2. So that's going to give me the ordered pair, 2, negative 1. Not yet. Normally, yes, but I'm not going to test it because I'm going to do another method, and we should get the same answer, and that will kind of verify that it's going to work. We eliminated the x and, and solved for y. And then we just plugged it back into one of the equations, doesn't matter which one, and solved for x. Is this one the same? If you get one solution, it's the only solution. Any method that we use to solve, if we get one solution, it's the only solution. Well, if we multiply by something other than negative two, we wouldn't have been able to eliminate the x. Remember, the whole point is to... Well, no, because, I mean, we specifically did negative two because we knew we wanted to get rid of four. And the only way to get rid of four was to make that two into negative four. Now, when, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna eliminate the y. So this is gonna be a little bit, a little bit closer to what you're thinking of, because we've got a five and a three. Generally, what we're going to do is 
we're going to think of them like denominators. We're going to find the least common denominator between 5 and 3. Okay? Which is really the what, least common multiple of 5 and 3. So we're looking for an LCM, LCD, of 5 and 3. So what's the least common multiple of 5 and 3? 15. So what have I got to multiply the top, number, the top equation by to get to 15? Not negative 3. 3. Well, they're already opposite signed, oh, okay. right. right? So I don't need to change any signs. So if I multiply the top by 3, and what have I got to multiply the bottom by to get to 15? 5. Well, I mean, yeah, if you want to multiply both of them by a negative number, that's fine. You can. But see, what this does now is it forces the 15 or the y to be 15 on the top and negative 15 on the bottom, and we're still got the same number but opposite signs. So this is going to give us 12x plus 15y equals 9, and then 10x minus 15y equals 35. And when I add those together, the y's cancel out, 22x equals 44. Right? Divide by 22, x equals 2. Now just like before, I've got one of my variables, so how do I get the other one? Plug it back into one of my original equation. So 4 times... 2 plus 5y equals 3. So 8 plus 5y equals 3. Subtract 8. 5y equals negative 5. Divide by 5. y equals negative 1. And once again, we get 2, negative 1 as our ordered pair. So this shows that it doesn't matter which variable you eliminate, you should get the same answer. Right? The method shouldn't matter. As a matter of fact, I can use elimination or uh, substitution on this. I could solve one of those for my variable, give me some weird fraction, plug it in, but I don't want to. Okay. So does this make sense? Does this make sense that we can eliminate one of the variables just by multiplying the entire equation by something? They just have to make sure that one of my variables is equal but opposite top and bottom. Okay? We're good? All right. So this is what we talked about a while ago. If the two lines intersect, there's exactly one solution. That's what it graphically looks like. If there's no solution, then it's two parallel lines. If it is infinitely many solutions, then that means that the lines are just on top of each other. Okay? Now, how do you get two lines on top of each other without you recognizing that they're the same thing? Well, they're not really fragments because a, a line is infinite. Multiples of each other. What if I've got, you know, y equals 2x plus 3? That's a line, right? What if I multiply the whole thing by 3? 3y equals 6x plus 9. Those are the exact same lines, just multiples of each other. That's how it happens that sometimes that they don't look like the same line, but they are. If they just happen to be multiples of each other. Okay? All right, so let's solve this system and see what happens. We don't have an obvious x equals or y equals, so we're going to use elimination method. Do we want to eliminate x or y? eliminate x. So what do we need to multiply by to eliminate? 
multiply the top by 2, that's going to give us 10x minus 4y equals 8. I act like I don't have an eraser. And then we've got negative 10x plus 4y equals 7. So when I add these together, notice what happens. 0 equals 15. Zero does not equal 15. Therefore, there's no solution. This is the case of parallel lines. Because notice what happens. If the x and the y's are the same, that means my slope is going to be the same. But if the number is different, that means my y-intercept is different. So what I have is a line here and a line here. Same slope, different y-intercepts, parallel lines, okay? So, false. False means no solution. So we've seen two things, either you get an answer which means that's the only solution. You get a false statement. That means there's no solution. What do you think is going to happen next? If we got a false statement, what do you think we're going to get on this one? Right? And it's going to come from what? Not a false statement, but a true statement. So what's going to happen here? Let's first, let's rearrange. Well, this one's actually primed for doing substitution because it's x equals something, right? So we can do substitution on this one. So if we let x be 4y minus 8, we're just going to plug that in for x. 5 times 4y minus 8, which is our x, minus 20y equals negative 40. 5 times 4y, 5 times negative 8. And we collect our like terms. We get negative 40 equals negative 40. Yeah, that's true. But I got rid of all my variables, right? If you get no variables and you get a true solution, a true uh, statement, <coughs> a true statement means infinitely many solutions. Now, in the homework, they may ask you to write this in set builder notation. If they do, it's just the set of all x's, or the, I'm sorry, the set of all ordered pairs such that either one of these lines, x equals 4y minus 8, or you could write it as 5x minus 20y equals negative 40. It's the ordered pair such that that line is true. Yes, ma'am. Well, this one we used uh, substitution because it already had x equals something. That's the only time I generally use substitution, is if it's already solved for me. There's no reason to do it another way because just that's just quicker. However, if we're, like I said, if you just get in the habit of doing elimination, there's no problem with rewriting this, subtracting 4y from both sides. Rewrite this as x minus 4y equals negative 8. And then this is 5x minus 20y equals negative 40. Right? So I want to eliminate one of the variables. Which one do I want to eliminate? Eliminate x. So I'm going to multiply by negative 5. Gives me negative 5x plus 20y equals positive 40. Then the bottom one is 5x minus 20y equals negative 40. What happens? 0 equals 0. Either way, you're going to wind up with the same thing, a true statement. Okay? Right, because it already had it primed to do 
substitution. Right, you're tr you basically what you would do was, since you've got x equals, you're going to plug it in and solve for y, but since it eliminated both x and y, you have to look at whether it's a true or false statement. And since it's a true statement, that means there's infinitely many solutions. So that's the three different things that can happen. You get an answer, it's the only answer. You get a false statement, there's no answer. You get a true statement, there's infinitely many answers. Okay? All right, so here's our random problem of the day. It's a really good problem, though. Company manufactures running shoes with a fixed cost of $300,000. Additionally, it costs $30 per shoe to produce them, or per pair, I should say. $30 per pair of shoes to produce them. If we sell them at $80 per pair, no, not if, we do sell them at $80 per pair. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write a cost function. I mean, we've done cost functions before. Cost function is just your fixed costs plus your variable costs. Okay? So we're going to call our cost function C. And what are our fixed costs? 300,000. And what are our variable costs? $30 per shoe, right? So how would I write that? 30x. Where x is the number of shoes that I produce. Okay? So that's my cost. If I make 400 shoes, all I got to do is plug it in, 400 for x, and that's how much it costs. Okay? So anytime we do cost functions, there it is. Fixed plus variable. Now, what about revenue? What is revenue? It's how much we have coming in, right? So what is our revenue function? How much do we make? ADX. Mm -mm. We're just talking about revenue. This is just, just strictly coming in. Revenue is like your gross. Okay? I don't remember what it was. I, I saw a movie one time, and <laughs> they had the funniest line in it. I thought it was funny anyway. They were talking about their how much money they were making, and he's like, we made this. And he's like, is that our net or our gross? He's like, our net is gross. And I thought that was funny. Anyway, they didn't make a whole lot of money. So that's our revenue, ADX. Now, we want to determine the break-even point. What is the break-even point? Same thing coming in is going out. Cost is the same as your revenue. That makes sense. I'm not making any money, but I'm not losing any money. Okay? Break even. Now, they want you to think of this as being two different functions. C of x equals 300,000 plus 30x, and Rx equals 80x. Okay? Now, for the break even point, your Cx and your Rx have to be equal. So we'll just both we'll call both of them the same. We'll just call them y. Now we have a system. Okay? So the break even point would be the point where they're intersecting each other, right? Where they're equal to each other. So we can solve this system and it should give us our break-even point. Now, this is really stupid one to solve a system of equations when you've got two things equal to each other because all you do is just set them equal to each other and solve it, but 
we're going to do it because it's the way it's presented to us. If we solve this by one of our methods, what's the easiest method to use? Substitution. Substitution. They're both solved for y already, so it doesn't matter which one we use. So let's take this y and plug it in there. And we just get 300,000 plus 30x equals 80x. Oh, we just set them equal to each other. Go figure. And if we subtract 30x from both sides, we get 300,000 equals 50x divided by 50 x is 6,000 pairs of shoes. All right, to determine how much money that is, what do I do? Yeah, just plug it back into the equations. Either one of them, since it should be the break even point, it should work in either one of them. The easier one to do, of course. Let's just multiply it by 80. So that's going to give you 48, 1, 1, 2, 3. $480,000 is your break even point. 6,000 shoes, 6,000 pairs of shoes, $480,000. So if I were to give you a problem and say, how many pairs of shoes do they have to make to make a profit? What would your answer be? 6,001. To make a profit. 6,000 is your break even point. So, yes, you have to make. It's, yeah, it's crap profit. They've made $50, but they did make profit. Okay? So, any questions on that method? Other than why would we use that to do that? I wouldn't. All right. Okay, what a. Oh, it's only 11.55. We still got a little bit. Let's go ahead and hop in to point two. Now we want to talk about what happens if we've got more than two variables. So we want to verify a solution to a system of linear equations in three variables. And we want to be able to solve systems with three variables. Okay? So here we've got ax plus by plus cz equals d. So we've got three variables, x, y, and z. And we're going to have three equations in a system. So a solution to a system of three equations is going to be an ordered triple. Okay? That's what we call three numbers together instead of an ordered pair, it's an ordered triple. Now we want to verify that an ordered triple is a solution. So how do we do it? It would. It's just three-dimensional. So y'all know how to draw 3D? It is That's the 3D where this is positive Y, this is positive X, and this is Z. Z is up, X and Y is flat. I'm not going to ask you to do it. I just wanted you to see it so you, if you ever come across it. It's like if you have this is X and Y. X and Y. There's Z. Okay. And there's the floor. All right. So, how do we solve this? It's no different than an ordered pair being a solution to a system of two. We're just going to plug them in to each one and see if they work. 
Do what? Mm -mm, no, I'm just going to plug these X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, and see if it works. Okay, I'm not actually solving it yet. We'll get there. First, I just want to just want to know if it's a solution. So, X is negative one minus two times negative four plus three times five. So that's negative one plus eight plus fifteen. That's 22 equals 22. So the first one works. So then we do the second one. 2 times negative 1 minus 3 times negative 4 minus 5. Negative 2 plus 12 minus 5. That's going to give me negative 2 is 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. So 5 equals 5. So yes, it works for the second one. Fingers crossed, let's try the third one. Three times negative one plus negative four minus five times five equals negative 32. Negative three minus four minus 25. Negative 32 equals negative 32. So is this a solution? You betcha. Okay? So it's no different than doing a two-dimensional version. You're just going to plug them in. just takes you a little longer. All right. how to do three variables. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the system and reduce it to two equations by eliminating one of the variables. We know how to eliminate variables. We just learned how to do it. So we're going to take two equations, don't matter which two, and eliminate one of the variables. Okay? Now, we're going to take the other two eliminate the same variable. Okay? So we're going to take two and then another two and eliminate the same variable from two. That's going to give us two equations with two variables, which we know how to do. And then we solve that by using the methods we know how to do. So this seems really complicated. It's not. So, what variable do you want to eliminate? Looking at these, which one looks like it's probably going to be the easiest one? Z looks like it's probably going to be the easiest one, because you got one, negative one, and two. Okay? So if we look at just the first two equations, it's going to eliminate itself automatically if I add them together, right? Because they're already opposite signs. So if I add them together, what am I going to get? What's x plus 3x? And then equals 28. Okay. Now, I'm going to take two other. Let's take top and bottom. What do I need to multiply the top one by? I need to multiply it by 2. So it's going to give us 2x plus 8y minus 2z equals 40. Now let's add the top and bottom. Five y. The z's are going to cancel out. 40 minus 16, 22. So now I have a system. And I can't add it. 24. I didn't do anything to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm just adding, adding them together. 
2x plus 2x is 4x. 8y minus 3y is 5y. The negative 2z and the positive 2z cancel each other out. And then 40 minus 16 is 24. Because that's what we do. That's how we eliminate a variable, right? What do you mean? Well, you just pick two equations. Any two. Like we, we, the first time we picked the top, the, the two middle, we did these two. That's how we got this one. It doesn't matter which two you use. You're going to pick two, eliminate the variable. Then you're going to pick two other ones, not the same two, but just two other ones, and eliminate the same variable. Okay. Well, you have a what do you mean? You mean the brace? Because this gives us a new set. This is what, now we need to solve this using what we just did in the last section. So what's going to be the easiest way to solve this? Eliminate a variable? Which one? The x. So we need to multiply top or bottom, doesn't matter which one, by negative 1. Let's do the bottom. So that's going to give us 4x plus 6y equals 28, and negative 4x minus 5y equals negative 24. And then we add them together. So that's going to eliminate the 4x. y equals 4. OK, now we know what y is. How do we solve for x? Plug it back into one of these equations. So 4 times x plus 5 times 4 equals 24. 4x plus 20 equals 24. Subtract 20 to get the x by itself. 4x equals 4. Divide by 4 x equals 1. So now I've got x and y. I got those two. I can plug back into one of the original equations and solve for z. So let's go back to the first one. x plus 4y minus z equals 20. 1 plus 16 minus z equals 20. 17 minus z equals 20. Subtract 17. Negative z equals 3. And then divide by negative 1. z equals negative 3. So that's going to give me the ordered triple 1, 4, negative 3. And you do one of these problems, you really feel like you've accomplished something. Because they're they can be long. So there's going to be seven of them on the final. No. <laughs> that wouldn't be too bad. I mean, that's pretty easy final if that's all you got to do. Right. If that's all you had to do. Ten of these, and that's the final. It would be, yeah. You would definitely be able to cram for that. Okay? Does that make sense, though, what we're doing? Eliminate a variable from the first set, then take any either, just not the same two, and eliminate the same variable, okay? And then you've got a system with two, you know how to solve that. Can there be multiple solutions to a 3 No. Same deal. If you get one solution, because what happens with three? If you've got three lines, either they all cross at the same place, Two of them don't, you get no solution, you know, or they're all three the same line, which would be infinitely many solutions. So you still wind up with the same deal. Can what? Look at the look at the origin. It's three lines meeting.
Any, any, any three lines can meet, but they're not guaranteed to. You're a lot less likely to get a solution with a three set than a two set. Okay? Because you might have a line here, a line here, and then that third line is parallel to one of the others, or, you know, it doesn't have to be parallel to both of them. It can't be parallel to both of them, but, you know, it only has to be parallel to one of them. Okay? And we'll go ahead and stop there.